So we have this this group of mighty men. This some some scholars, historians say this small group of just a few hundred uh, warriors that had gathered around David perhaps had become the greatest group of fighting men the world has ever known. They were incredible. And we could talk about some of their exploits that are listed in Scripture. Incredible warriors. Where did they come from? Well, that's really where I want to jump in and slow down with this. 1 Samuel 22 is where it all began. 1 Samuel 22. And what many people also don't realize is from the time the prophet anointed David to be king and he made it to the throne in Jerusalem was 20 years. When you think about it and you read about the, the time when he was an outcast, he was in exile, he was living in Adullam, Saul was pursuing him. It's easy to read through all that history fairly quickly and not realize just how long this lasted. It was 13 years from the anointing uh, when he was anointed to be king before he uh, took the throne in Judah in Hebron. It was another seven years before he made it to the throne in Jerusalem. That's a long time to have been anointed to be king while you're running around hiding in caves with a small army of three or four hundred men. When someone else is sitting on the throne that was supposed to be you. So... The chapter in Chronicles with the sons of Issachar and the others that had become this great army. This started 20 years earlier in 1 Samuel 22. So let's read the first two verses and see what it says. David departed from there, escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brothers and father's household heard of it, they went down to him. And everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was discontented gathered to him. And he became captain over them. So God's about to give David his mighty men, a great army. And it's comprised of three different groups of people. It is a motley crew. These are outcasts by the world's standards. The first word, distress. This is a, it's a strong word in Hebrew. It's a word that means anguish. It's a word that means disability. Some of them may have literally had physical disabilities. They were certainly disabled emotionally. And it's a word that means confinement. They're, they were in such a difficult place. Their emotions were such a wreck. Their lives were so out of control. It felt like they were confined, surrounded, hemmed in in every direction. Almost like it, I feel sometimes here in America. <laughs> Anguish. I will tell you. There is not a week that goes by, and there are often many days of that week, several days of that week, that I find myself in anguish, not in unbelief, but just in anguish over where we are. When I see what's happening to children and where this nation has, has gone, I find myself... Um, 
Grieving. Just because I believe God's going to change it all doesn't mean I don't grieve when I see it. Then the, the second group of people were those in debt. They, they had gotten in financial difficulties and they, they could do nothing. This is a very strong word. These were people that some of them possibly had been enslaved to other people because they owed them so much money. They were absolute, absolutely poor people. And the third group, it said, was bitter. The, the, the Hebrew is actually two words. It means it's mara, bitterness. It's nefesh, soul, bitter of soul. They, life had thrown them such difficulties and become so harsh they were bitter this was David's mighty man it, I don't want to take this too far down what I'm about to say but this is like you know it's not a great comparison, but this group that didn't have it together and became this great, maybe the greatest fighting group of men ever that's ever been assembled, I believe it's a picture of the Ecclesia. I believe it's a picture of, a, of, of, of what was a weak church, discouraged, defeated, just trying to hang on till Jesus came back. Hold the fort for I'm coming, you know, and just, you know, we will never really uh, be overcomers. We'll never uh, be more than conquerors, but uh, we're just going to hold on till Jesus comes. But he found a remnant of people that said, wait a minute, that's not what my Bible tells me. That doesn't describe a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. That doesn't describe a church that the gates of hell can't prevail against. So something started happening. I'm not sure how long ago it was. Certainly, several years ago, God started moving on a remnant of people that decided to throw out some of the theology that didn't match Scripture and say, well, what does the Bible say about this? And now there is, as Dan said, there is a remnant of people in this nation and in other nations that now understands that we are. We are his legislative governing people in the earth. We do have authority to bind and loose. We do have authority to cast out demons. We do have authority to overcome. We can do what he tells us to do. And this group is not small anymore. It is a growing remnant. And there are probably more in other countries than here in America. <laughs> 